Hey, Magic fans, we're back again. It's a little later in the day, but we're actually starting to get some stuff to talk about. <gasps> the shock, the awe, the horror. Anyway, so we have some really sweet news on the new cards in the Commander set for... Uh, I was going to say Ravnica. No, Murders at Karlov Manor. Oh my god, I need a nap. So, before we get started, don't forget, comment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, links in the description, all that good jazz, be a member, help support the channel, or just subscribe for free and watch the videos, that's all I really ask. I mean, who needs money, right, when you have friends who have said that was a fucking retard? Anyway, moving on. So, we're going to start off today with this little beauty. These are cards from the Blame Game Commander deck, and these are all the new ones. We'll go through the actual reprints of the decks later if we get around to it. Uh, but what's really important is all the new ones. So we have Feather, Radiant Arbiter. Um, if you guys uh, remember old Feather, uh, this is a pretty hot card for a while. This one is two white and red, just like before. Flying Lifelink, this is a 4-3. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell that targets only Feather, Radiant Arbiter, you may choose a number. You may choose any number of other creatures that spell could target. And pay two colorless for each of those creatures. If you do, for each of those creatures, copy that spell. The copy the copy targets that creature. The other feather used to bounce them back to your hand at the end of turn. All kinds of other weird shenanigans. So this is just what we need in our life uh, to pair with the other feather. Anyway, birds of a feather. <laughs> anyway, Havoc Eater, two red and five for this 3-3 three, three flyer. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent... Uh, for each opponent, go up to one target creature the opponent controls. Put X plus one plus one counter counters on the Havoc Eater, where X is the total power of creatures goaded this way. Sweet mother of God. For seven mana, this thing could be a 50-50. Just saying. Wow. We have Hot Pursuit. Red and one for this enchantment enters the battlefield. Suspect target creature and opponent controls. As long as the Hot Pursuit remains on the battlefield, that creature is also goaded. Beginning of combat in your turn, if two more players have lost the game, gain control of, the, of all goaded and or suspected creatures at the end of turn. Untap them. They gain haste till end of turn. Wow. Wow. Um, this is a permanent steal all your shit and punch you in the face card uh, when it's just you and your opponent. This, this is how you end commander games. I'm just saying. and It's all about goading. Let me get the goad on. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad pun. Anyway. Immortal Obligation. Immortal? Yeah, Immortal Obligation. White and one instant return target creature card from the opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under their control with a duty counter on it. <laughs> duty. For as long as that creature has a duty counter on it, <laughs> it's goaded, can't attack you or a permanent you control, and can't block creatures you control. Very interesting here I'll give your shit back card. So this is clearly a deck about goading and having and making sure everybody's punching everybody but you. Mob verdict: two red and two sorcery. Secret council. Each player secretly votes for another player. Then those votes are revealed for each vote an opponent receives. Mob verdict deals two damage to that player and each creature that player controls. For each vote you receive, draw a card. Uh, okay. Otherworldly escort. White and three for a four three of flash. Uh, when it dies, if it's not a, if it's not a spirit, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with four charge counters on it. It's a spirit detective. White and one tap, remove a charge counter from otherworldly escort, destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Um, actually, it's pretty cool the fact that you can just block with it and put it back in play. I'm just saying that's that's pretty neat. Prisoner's dilemma: two red and three sorcery. Each opponent secretly chooses silence or snitch. Then the choices are revealed. Each, If each opponent chooses Silence, Prisoner's Dilemma deals 4 damage to each of them. If each opponent chooses Snitch, Prisoner's Dilemma deals 8 damage to each of them. Otherwise, Prisoner's Dilemma deals 12 damage to each opponent who chose Silence. Wow. Um, that's something. Ransom Note, one cuddleless. When Ransom Note enters the battlefield, surveil one, tap, and sack. Uh, the Ransom Note, you can cloak top card of your library, go to creature, draw a card, because it is a clue. 
There are a couple more cards new to this deck. It's these three right here. Take the bait. White, red, and two. Instant cast this spell only during an opponent's turn and only during combat. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you and Planeswalkers you control this turn. Untap all attacking creatures and goad them. After this phase, there's additional combat phase. This is... This is a gold player's dream. Oh my god. Trouble in pairs. Two white and two. Enchantment. If an opponent would begin would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. Whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creatures, draws their second card each turn, or casts their second spell each turn, you draw a card. Well, there is the next Smother and Tithe. This is going to be a $40 card. Good lord. Um, anyway... Redemption Arc, white and two, enchant creature, enchant creature has indestructible and is goaded, exile the creature whenever you want, I mean decent removal, kind of, sort of, anyway, so that's all the new cards from Blame Game, it's a goad deck apparently, next we have this little sweet fella, it's the Deep Clue C, aw, oh, they made a pun, so Human Detective, oh it's a doggy. Sophia, Dog and Detective, funny, funny. Anyway, blue, white, green, and one, three, four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create tiny, a, leg <laughs> a legendary 2-2 two -two green dog detective creature token with trample. I love it. I love it. Put it in Rinseri. Um, one cuddleless, sacrifice an artifact token, put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog you control. Whenever a dog you control deals combat damage to a player, create a food token, then investigate. Good God. This is made for Rinseri. Holy cow, is that good? Um, yeah, that's a that's a deck. Anyway, armed with proof, white and two enchantment. When armed with proof enters the battlefield, investigate twice. Clues you control are equipment in addition to other types. They have equipped creatures plus two plus O oh, and equips for two. Eh. Detective of the month. That's so funny. Blue and two for a two three with a send. As long as you have the city's blessing, detective you control can't be blocked. Uh oh. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token. That's hot. That right there is amazing. Wow. Just draw cards, make detectives, get the city's blessing, and then punch them in the face they can't block any of your shit. That's so cool. Follow the bodies. Blue and two sorcery has Gravestorm. Whenever you cast this spell, copy it for each permanent put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Investigate. Okay. Whatever. Knowledge is power, blue and white and three. Creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn. That is awful. That is so awful. I mean, at worst, it's 1-1. One, one. At best, you might get plus three, plus three, and that doesn't include how much mana you need to draw those cards. Like, ugh, I don't like that. Oh, it's an enchantment. That makes it better. But not much. I'm not going to lie. Not, not much at all. <laughs> anyway, Merchant of Truth. Two white and two for a 2-5 flyer. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, investigate. Clues you control have exalted. Oh, oh, God. Um, That's definitely a commander card because that would be so broken in any other format. Holy cow. Wow, is that good. Uh, Innocuous Researcher. Or in... Inno curious. We'll say innocuous. I hold it. Green and three for a three four. It has parlay. Whenever it attacks, each player reveals top card of their library. For each non land card revealed this way, you investigate. Then each player draws a card. At the beginning of your end step, you may untap all lands you control. If you do, you can't cast spells until your next turn. Then why would you untap all your lands? I don't know. Maybe you were playing Nexus of Fate. God, that makes me sick just even saying it. Anyway, on the trail, green and one. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. That is sweet. It's an enchantment. It sits on the field, baby. I mean, yeah, eventually you'll run out of lands to play, but I mean, if you're drawing a second card every turn and you just hit the land pockets, just dump them on the field. Land, 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 land. All right, so the last couple from this one, we have the Serene Sleuth, a white and one for a 2-2 human detective. He enters the battlefield, he gets to investigate. At the beginning of combat in your turn, investigate for each goaded creature you control. Then each creature you control is no longer goaded. That's pretty cool. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. What if you could goad your own creature? No, this deck doesn't do that. But anyway, I mean, it's a good way to stop somebody from playing a goad deck, so that might actually be a little popular. Tangle Trove Kelp. Two blue and five for this 6-6 six, six ward two. Beginning of your end, at the beginning of each combat, other clues you control become 6-6 six, six plant creatures in addition to their other types until end of turn. Two colorless sacrifice to kelp draw a card. A clue plant. Now I've seen it all. Just putting it out there. And at the same time, that's really disgusting. You beat somebody down with a bunch of clue tokens. Just saying. Next we have this beautiful deck. And what little deck is this? Well, this little fella is Deadly Disguise. Don't let the cute little bears fool you. So, Duskana, the Rage Mother, white, green, red, and two for a 5-5. Five, five. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with base, power, and toughness 2-2. Two, two. That'll be a lot since uh, this is called Deadly Disguise, which means everything will be a 2-2 two, two, um, when it's not flipped up. Whenever a creature you control with base, power, and toughness 2-2 two, two attacks, it gets plus 3, plus 3. Oh, God. That's disgusting. Um, Tessak, Judas Hound. Um, hey, it's a dog. Red and Siri. Um, red and three for a 3-3. Three, three. Has Unleashed. You can make it a 4-4. Four, four. Other dogs you control have Unleashed. Creatures you control with counters on them have Haste. Uh, whenever the Hound attacks, add one red for each attacking creature. Holy sh... Cow. Moo. That thing is amazing. That's going to be a very popular commander card and very good in Red and Siri. Holy crap. So, show-stopping surprise. Two red and three. Choose target creature you control. Turn it face up. If it's face down, then it deals damage equal to its power to each other creature. That's kind of cool. Oh, boy, what a name. Pano, panop, panoptic projector. Ugh. Four colorless artifact. The next face down creature spell you cast this turn costs three less to cast. Wow, just cast them for free, huh? If turning a face down permanent face up causes the ability to trigger of a permanent, that triggered ability triggers an additional time. That's also going to be very popular. Holy sh shnikey. Yeah, you can't cost in the video. I get demonetized. Um, experiment 12. <laughs> funny. Funny. Green and 3 for a 4-4 four, four trample. Experiment 12. Or another creature you control is turned face up. Put a plus one plus one counter. Each creature is equal to its power. Put plus one plus one counters on that creature equal to its power. Oh, okay. So if you turn it face up, it's just, it's just an 8-8 Trampler for 5 mana. Blech. Um, Yeah. We have Print Lifter Ooze. Oh, he's got a cute little face on him. One green and one. Two, two Death Touch are already cool. Whenever it or another creature you control is turned face up, create a OO green ooze creature token with Trample. The token enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, and X is the number of other creatures you control. This is a disgusting card. And not because it's an ooze, because that is really powerful. Wow, is that really powerful. All right, next we have Bolt Bender. Red and three for a 4-2. Has disguise two, red and one. When Bolt Bender's turn face up, you may choose new targets for any number of other spells and or abilities. Mm. I mean, that's fine. I, I don't think it's probably not good enough to play. But it's fine. I mean, it, it, it has its purpose. True Identity, a white and one. Whenever True Identity or another permanent you control is turned face up, scry one, then draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Thank God. This is disgusting. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, latest face down for three, flip it up for one, scry one, draw one, flip my other card up, scry one, draw one. And you can, because you can, you can, <clears throat> you can turn cards up on the opponent's turn. So you can get this ability every turn for every person you're playing. This is going to be a very popular card. True Identity is banging. All right, next we have Unexplained Absence. <laughs> it's funny. White and three instant for each player. Exile up to one target online permanent that player controls. For each permanent exile this way, its controller cloaks the top card of their deck or top card of their library. Oh, it's just gone. Like, you, you exile and it's just gone. Holy cow. That's good removal. That is, that's good removal. 
Uh, we have Veiled Ascension, white, and three. Enchantment, when it enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on each face-down creature you control. Face-down creatures you control enter the battlefield with flying counters on them. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may cloak the top card of your library. <laughs> There's a card like this that was in cons that lets you make a top card of your library a creature every turn. It was a creature as well, and it was horrifying. And this is an enchantment which is harder to deal with. This is going to be very popular. It's going to see lots of play. Thank God it's in Commander because I don't want to play against this in Standard. God, that'd be just ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. All right. So now we're at the Marvo of Deep Op Marvo the Deep Operative. This is the Revenant Recon. We'll see what that really means. So we have a Legendary Octopus rogue that makes perfect sense black blue and three for a one eight whenever the operative attacks clash with defending player god i've seen clashing forever so if you don't know clashing players reveal the top card of their library then puts that card on the top or bottom a player wins if their card is higher than the other mana value whenever you win a clash draw a card then you may cast a spell from your hand with mana value 8 or less without paying its mana cost. Oh, that's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. Just free casting almost everything in Magic's history that's ever been printed. What could be wrong with But That's completely reasonable. No, there's nothing to see here. Nothing at all. No. That's sarcasm if you're not catching it, for those in the back. Anyway, Case of the Shifting Visage, 2 blue and 1. The game of your upkeep, Surveil 1. That's not bad. 3 mana's a bit rough. Uh, to solve, there are 15 or more cards in your graveyard, and you know, whatever. Once you solve it, whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell, copy that spell. That's disgusting. Non-legendary creature spell, huh? Hmm. Really? You just gonna make two of every blue slash whatever other creature type you're playing? I mean, luckily, this is in Commander. We only have one of something anyway. But now you have two whenever you cast it. And if you copy one of them, it doesn't matter because the copy's a token. It still comes into play because it's on the cast trigger. That's going to be a $15 card, I think. Anyway, we have Copy Catchers. Blue and one for 2-1 Flying Fairy. That's already great. Uh, whenever you surveil, you may pay a blue and one. If you do, create a token that's a copy of the Copy Catchers. That's actually a good card. I know we don't talk about surveil a lot, but there's a lot of good surveil cards. And and that that's a thing right there. Every time you surveil, you make a 2-1 Flyer. That gets out of hand quick. And they're fairies. Fairies. So, final word, Phantom and blue and two for this 1-4 Flying Flash. Uh, during each opponent's end step, you may cast spells as though they had flash. That's really cool. I mean, it, it sucks you can't do it during their turn, but it's at their end step. That's when you would normally cast stuff anyway that's instant. And this lets you do it. Plus, it's a 1-4. It's not even a defender. You can get in there for one. Anyway, moving on. We have Watcher of Hours, Blue and 5, for a 6-6 six, six, Flying Ward 3. That's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, whenever you remove a time counter from Watcher of Hours while it's exiled, surveil one. And you can suspend this thing for six. So you suspend it for two, and then every time a time counter hits it, you basically get to surveil for six turns. That is bonkers. Man, is that good. Anyway, Char Ch Ch Charnel Serenade? Car carnal, char charnel, char 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 charnel, chappy. Anyway, two black and four. Surveil three. Return target creature card from graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. Exile this card with three time counters on it. Um, that's disgusting. Hang on a second. Let me read that again. Surveil three. Then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. Exile Charnel's Serenade with three time counters on it. So every three turns this thing goes off. So you just got to suspend it first time and then just let it go. And if they want to stop it, they have to counter it. 
That's ridiculous. Holy crap, is that good. We have the Eye of the Dusk Mantle. That's a, that's a whole lot of eye. Let me tell you what. Um, two black and five for a 3-8 flying lifelink. Uh, you may play lands and cast spells from among cards in your graveyards. You've surveilled this turn. If you cast a spell this way, you may pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. Ooh. Man, that's good. But it is seven mana, so it's going to be kind of hard to get anything going. But it's, it's pretty neat. For Boating Steamboat. Is that like Steamboat Willie's little cousin? Who, like, steals your catalytic converter when you're not looking? Anyway, moving on. Two black and three for this 5-7. When it enters the battlefield, each player chooses two non-token, non-vehicle creatures they control. Exile them until the, the foreboding steamboat leaves the battlefield. When foreboding steamboat attacks, put a card exiled with it into its owner's graveyard if you do investigate. So if you don't deal with this right away, eventually it's going to swing and you're going to lose your shit. That's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. So that's actually pretty on par with being fair. Don't say that very often. So we have Unshakable Tail. Black and two for a 3-2. Enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your inkeep. Surveil one. Oof. Whenever one or more creature cards are put in the graveyard from your library, you investigate. It goes good with a card that has Surveil already on it. And for two, sacrifice a clue. Return the Unshakable Tail from your graveyard to your hand. Wow. That's really cool. That's going to be a good one. We have Counterpoint, black, blue, and three. Instant counter target spell. You may cast a creature, instant sorcery or planeswalker spell, from your graveyard with mana value less than or equal to the spell's mana value. Equal to that spell's mana value without paying its mana cost. That is disgusting. That is going straight into my commander deck. I am getting one of these for my commander deck. Because there's nothing better than going, nope, you can't have that, but hey, look what I found, candy. Um, yeah, th this is going to be very popular, too. This this deck's got some good cards in it. Um, I mean, I do play Black Blue. I'm kind of biased. I'm not going to lie. Um, but anyway, there you have it. All the new sweet cards. So check them out. Grab you some Commander decks and uh, yeah, send some my way if you like. So with that, with all that said, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Till next time, be kind. And as always, I hope to see you across from the counter, across from the game table i need a nap i have too much caffeine and not enough sleep eh. i'm out